Hey, Jordana. All right, everybody's going to be a little bit late. I'm just getting, I'm resending invites now. No problem. everybody good evening how are you yeah hey jeff how's it going brian hi Jordan. good how about yourself good good everything's going well it's a good thing one weekend right yeah absolutely <laughs> hey Laura. what's up mr malone how you doing jeff <laughs> hanging in there my man you're at home tonight <laughs> Yes. I mean, uh, it's a role reversal of the dress tonight. What are we doing? I know. I went, I went, I, I came home, washed my car, <laughs> went a little casual, you know? <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> hey, Brittany. And I think that's everybody that I had to send it to again. Do we have? Oh, your ghost, good. Alex, Susan, Chris, Jordana. I won't see Sandy. Does anybody see Sandy? I resent it to her too. Let me double check her. Hold on. Hey, Scott, I used an old one. Okay, well, you should have just got one just a moment ago. Oh, let me see. Hold on. It's fine. You're in, so it doesn't... Well, I, I just need to forward so I can do it from the computer instead of... All right. Sandy should be able to get in already. I'm just going to mute it. Let me give her a quick call. Hold on. Victoria, I'm not seeing the scoreboard. Let me refresh. 
I'm leaving you from here. Hey, Sandy, should be coming in in a second now. Let me know when you see her, Scott. Uh. And he's on. Perfect. All righty. So we have everybody with that. Um, is there a motion to start the meeting? So moved. Second. Is, all righty. Um, did we have Victoria join yet? Yeah, she just joined. Perfect. So, so if we could open the voting, Victoria, for a uh, motion by... Jordana, second by Sandy to open the meeting. That was second by Chris, I think. Okay, second by Chris. Sorry, I was in the way. No problem. Can I see who's present? How many board members are present? Uh, all seven board members are present. Gotcha. Sorry, give me one second. I'm sorry, so who motioned first? I believe it was Jordana motioned, Chris seconded. Okay, give me one. Patch up there. Okay, should be open. Great. Okay. Waiting for. Oh, give me a second. Uh, oh, it says I abstain, change vote. Give me a second. Yep. Okay, that's unanimous. Thank you. All right, great. Thanks. Now that the meeting is open, please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, justice for all. Okay. Um, on to guidelines for public input one. Um, with respect to that, if there is somebody who would like to make any comments to the board uh, or administration, not including about the reopening, we're gonna get an update from the superintendent and administration regarding the reopening, at which point we encourage the public to then ask questions uh, at that time. Are there any hands or comments in the chat box? Yeah, Brian, Catherine, uh, Kathy Carlosi would like to talk. Yes, please, please uh, join us, Kathy. Uh, she's not using the latest version of Zoom. No. Um, hold on. Kathy, can you hear us? If you can, unmute your mic and let's see if we can hear you. How about now? Ah, yes. yes. There you go. Great. Okay. Okay. Um, my name is Catherine Carlazzi. I have been at the school monitor slash security for many years. I have had the honor of meeting, working with many employees. I also have had the privilege of meeting many families that have come and gone and their children. This is my family away from my family. The school will always have a special piece of my heart. Hopefully one day my adult children will realize how lucky they had it to go to Santa Barbara Elementary and Pearson School with the guidance, the care, the understanding, and the patience that each one of the employees showed them. And I'm not kidding about the, um, I'm not kidding, I should have put hair stock in hair dye. I, put, I should have put stock in hair dye because those grays kept on coming. I would like to say thank you to the board for always looking to put the children first, for being their voice, never stop. A special thank you to Mr. Malone 
who was my daughter's fourth grade teacher then and has moved up to principal, my boss at the elementary school. Your guidance, your positivity of always looking at the bright side as has made working at the elementary school a place I will always enjoy, have enjoyed. If I had to do it all over again, without a doubt, I would. Good luck to all of you. Um, good luck to all of you. And a heart warm thank you. My last day at the Sag Harbor Elementary will be October 2nd. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. I can, I'll open it up to the board if the board wants to make any comments and or any of the administrators. We're gonna miss you so much. Thank you for everything. I'm actually a little teary eyed. It's like an end of an era for me, Kathy. So I just wanna say thank you to just being such a positive role model. Every morning you greeted those kids with the biggest smile and costumes and when your shoes are gonna be really hard to fill. But I wish you the best in your next venture and um, enjoy it because you deserve it. I, I want to dovetail on that. I'm actually tearing up because I think you have been so much of the DNA and heart of the school. You've been a big part of that. And no one has been willing to wear more ridiculous costumes in the name of helping children feel happy and safe and excited and accepted. And you did everything you could to make sure that every child felt like they were special and in a special place. And, uh, you know, I just I cannot thank you enough from the bottom of my heart. I wish you the best retirement. I would, uh, I could say some words. Um, I know Kathy as a, as a parent and she was wonderful in that regard. And I had the privilege of working with her children, but I think the person best uh, to speak to her uh, time in Sag Harbor is probably Mr. Malone, who she referenced in her comments. So uh, Matt, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Mr. Nichols. Uh, it's an honor to just say a few brief words about Mrs. Carlazzi. Kathy, I, um, I'm so very happy for you as you make this move towards retirement, but, but sad for us because um, the void you're going to leave is something I, I know is going to be um, nearly impossible to fill. Um, as you mentioned in your words, Sarah Carver Elementary in our school district is kind of like a a family away from home and you've, you've served as, as a big part of the glue that's kept the family together all these years. So um, with everything you've done and all the time you've given, a lot of people see the things you do, um, you know, in the daylight, so to speak, but, but I know all the things you've done also behind the scenes. And um, as a principal, when there's, when there's someone I've needed to call on, usually Kathy was at the top of the list. So um, Kathy, thank you on, be, on behalf of everybody. Thank you for everything you've done for the kids of Santa Carver and everyone you've worked with. We wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Good luck, Kathy. It was a pleasure uh, being able to, not coming from Santa Carver, I would roll up and be like, wait, what, what is she wearing today? What holiday is it? It was great to see when you rolled around the corner, how, what you had, your personality, what was going on when we would let the children out as well as during the school. So thank you. And I uh, wish you luck in your future endeavors. Great. Um, and with that, I will move to item five on tonight's agenda, the superintendent's report, uh, Mr. Nichols. Yeah, thanks, uh, Brian. Um, so the first day of school in terms of students coming back was uh, September 14th. And as per previous comments, uh, kindergarten through eighth grade has been in school um, every day since the 14th and grades nine through 12 have been engaged in a hybrid schedule with uh, students with last names uh, a through L coming on Mondays and Tuesdays and M through Z coming Thursdays and Fridays with Wednesday being an all remote day. Uh, for the most part, the class sizes uh, at the elementary school, we're trying to limit it to 12 per classroom. Uh, at the middle school, high school, um, we tried to limit it to 12, but our class uh, sizes are such that we can 
bump that up to about 15 or 16 and still maintain the six foot social distancing. Uh, there are a couple of larger sections, um, upwards of 24 students, but those classes are housed in um, classrooms that are basically double classrooms. So where we have a dividing wall, we can take it down and have larger sections while still maintaining social distancing. Uh, I would say that the, that the first week uh, I thought went really well. I talked to Mr. Malone um, and Ms. Carriero and the feedback was that uh, for the most part, the students adapted well, parents adapted well. Uh, there are a lot of new protocols and procedures that everybody had to adapt to and big picture. Um, we think that everybody did a, a very, very good uh, job adjusting. Uh, and obviously we're going to continue to adjust uh, as we move forward. Uh, it's been a really busy summer in terms of trying to staff uh, the way that school uh, has to be organized. So I've made these comments before, but basically if you have sections of 24 students and you divide them into 12, um, you have an increased staffing need related to the additional sections. So through uh, this morning, this year, we've hired 23 new teachers, uh, three teacher assistants, three custodians, two in the transportation department, one in the cafeteria department, one in the uh, clerical union and one uh, school monitor for a total of 34 uh, new employees, which is sort of unheard of um, pre-COVID-19, but I would suspect the new norm as it relates to uh, districts dealing with uh, the current circumstances. So I just want to thank everybody involved in um, doing everything they can to staff the building appropriately so that our students are served uh, the way that they should be. Um, some new news this last week, uh, Section 11 postponed the start of athletics from September 21st, which was the original uh, start date through January 4th. And um, I think the logic that they uh, referenced in making that decision was sound, um, that there are a lot of unknowns and that we should really focus our attention on a safe reopening of school. And basically big picture, what they did is they took the three sports seasons, fall, winter, and spring, and condense them, at least in their plan as it stands now, into three succinct time periods. So the winter season is going to run from January 4th through February 27th. Uh, the fall season will run from March 1st through May 1st. And the spring season will run uh, the 26th of April through the 19th of June. Uh, obviously, all these plans are tentative, depending upon the conditions on the ground. Um, but I applaud Section 11 for making what I see as a, as a prudent decision, uh, looking out for the best interests and the health and well-being of all concerned. Um, the first week of school, um, I want to let the community know and the Board of Education know that although we, we do not have any uh, positive test results as of yet, each day brings with it uh, a set of decisions that the school has to make with, with regard to students who exhibit symptoms associated with COVID-19. So a word or two about my last statement. Uh, the symptom list for COVID-19 is pretty expansive. It includes sore throat, fever, stomach ache, um, typical symptoms associated with other um, maladies, if you will, things like colds, a regular cold or allergies or things like that. But the guidance that has been um, that has been distributed or disseminated from the state has very clear guidelines as to how districts need to proceed. So if a student exhibits any symptoms that fall within the symptom list for COVID-19, that student needs to uh, remain out of school for 10 school days um, or until they receive a negative COVID-19 test. Well, already this week, 
I would say on average, there are between five and 10 situations a day where a student uh, is sent home with symptoms that very well may not be COVID-19, but the symptoms fall within the COVID-19 symptom list. And the directive from the school is that they need to stay away for 10 school days or they need a COVID test, uh, a negative COVID test that enables them to come back sooner. Um, and Jeff, so just, just yeah. on that point to clarify for everyone listening, when you say 10 school days, 14 calendar days, meaning just Monday through Fridays so that everyone that's listening is uh, consistent with what they hear as 14 days, correct? Correct, and thank you for that clarification. And I just wanna thank um, our nurses because they're placed in a very, very difficult situation because they have to communicate with families and basically hold the line with regard to the Department of Health guidelines. So they're typically calling up families and saying, your child needs to remain home, you know, for 10 school days or 14 calendar days, uh, unless they get a COVID test that comes back negative, to which some families are saying, yeah, but it's just the common cold. Well, we don't have the liberty to make that distinction. The guidance is very, very clear. And the fallback position is test, 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 um, which I'm comfortable with, actually. I think it's a good fallback position to have. So again, a big picture, I would say between five and 10 situations a day, district-wide where the nurses and the administrators are considering uh, symptoms and communicating with families regarding what I just discussed. Um, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, Co-curricular update, I did talk a little bit about uh, sports with regard to the latest update. My comments um, going back to the summer have been that we will assess the conditions on the ground, if you will, in the district, the end of September. And at that point, consider on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, starting up certain co-curriculars that we can do so uh, in a safe manner. And I know that Ms. Carriero at the middle school, high school level has set up a tentative meeting, a brainstorming meeting, if you will, with parents of theater um, students. And I know that Mr. Malone at the elementary school is actively um, you know, monitoring the situation with an eye towards which activities uh, he can run potentially uh, beginning really the end of September, beginning of October. But I wanna reemphasize that our, our primary focus has been throughout uh, looking to make sure that the reopening is safe uh, and as orderly as possible. And once we sort of have that down, we'll turn our lens to the co-curriculars. Um, so those are the big ticket items with regard to the reopening. I'm happy to answer uh, any questions that anybody has at this time. Um, start first with members of the board. Are there any questions from board members? Uh, thank you very much for that update. The uh, Going into the school year, we've gotten some tentative numbers about new students that had registered in the district. Um, can you just give us an update on once school opened, what those numbers looked like, please? Sure, so as of this morning, it was 104 uh, new students uh, who are in district, who are not uh, students uh, in the previous year. And we had extended uh, invitations to the 21 families who were on the waiting list for new non-resident tuition paying interested parties. Uh, and that number uh, is fluid, um, but we've had a, a number of responses uh, positive and we have a few more to, to process. Any other questions from members of the board? Are there any questions from members of the public um, with respect to the school opening or for administration at this point, please raise your hand um, and Scott will unmute you or you could post a question into the chat room. Uh, any hands? 
I'm not seeing any hands. Brian, before we move on, can I ask one more question? Sure. Thank you. Um, uh, my second question is just, um, are, is there any semblance of physical education and or music during the day? And if not, what are those teachers um, doing? Uh, as it currently stands right now, what you what you know traditionally as music education or uh, physical education uh, is different. So at the middle school, high school, uh, it's a lot of outdoor activities, whether it's walking um, or stationary yoga where they're distanced apart. But a lot of the traditional team sports or any activities that entail close physical proximity, those are off the board. Um, it's general music for the most part, uh, chorus and band, again, things that we traditionally know for health reasons have not been happening, but if Ms. Carriero, if you have any additional comments at the middle school, high school, please add. Yeah, so um, hi all. So our teachers have been very creative and it's actually stirred their passion for teaching up and create their creative juices flowing. So our phys ed staff has thought out of the box. Yes, they've been doing walking. Yes, they've been doing yoga, but they've been also bring your own equipment type of stuff. So there's been Frisbee golf that's been going on in the backyard. There's been bocce that's been going on in the backyard. Those lifetime activities that we all need to do, especially when we get older and a little bit maybe slower moving. And as for um, music education, again, out of the box thinking, Miss Nicoletti has purchased some ukulele. So she's gonna be teaching kids and they're gonna have their own ukulele that they will use to learn how to play ukulele. Our, one of the new hires, Brandon Bouchamy, he's been, he just did a lesson that I walked into this morning on vibrations of sound. So he had different objects in households to make different sounds and make music out of that and kids used what was on their desk to make music. So they are thinking out of the box and making the creative juices flowing. And it's actually been a fun time in the classroom, even though there's been masks on during a pandemic. Great, Mr. Malone, do you wanna add anything? Sure, likewise, actually the, um, the teachers have done a, a wonderful job. Um, actually, Mr. Bramoff, um, aside from being athletic director, as a phys ed teacher down at the Learning Center, he's done a, a great job of leading fitness activities and, and some great games down there, which are both a part of the, the phys ed time, but also um, provide activities during the mask breaks. At both buildings, we, we embedded mask breaks in the morning and afternoon for the students, where as long as weather permits, we get them outside for 15 to 20 minutes. And those times are actually led by the phys ed teachers. So we've kind of melded phys ed with, with those times. Um, on the music front, the, the children are getting experiences, um, but actually on a weekly basis, more like a week long unit, we made that decision to, to try to limit the amount of interaction between teachers and cohorts. So they're not moving all over the building, rather they, they spend a week with an actual cohort and the feedback has been very positive. The teachers actually, you know, see this as a, a way they can really get to know the students and, and instruction um, so far has been um, real positive. Great, thanks. And, and Jeff, just maybe an update or from the administration as to our special education or special learners, or any, everything is, is moving along with, with them, any, any issues or, or otherwise, anything good in the report? Uh, well, we've actually spent a lot of time um, making sure that we're properly staffed. So rather than have me speak to the specifics, I'll turn it over to Dr. Mears. Yes, good evening. I'm sorry. Can I, can you just repeat that question and make sure that I'm clear? So, just, just go ahead, Jeff. Sorry. So, uh, so uh, Brian asked a little bit about the update with regard to how things are going in special ed. Uh, and I said that, you know, we spent a lot of time making sure that we were appropriately staffed, uh, but with regard to specific developments, I would turn it over to you to, to address. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Mr. Nichols. So um, as, as Mr. Nichols pointed out, the primary concern right now is making sure that we're fully staffed, especially for our remote and the service delivery model needed to be looked at 
because when we're thinking about an integrated co-teacher setting where we have one special education certified teacher as well as a general education certified teacher, the way that works and that interaction is a little bit different when we're working remotely with learners. So we've been very fortunate in the Sarah Carver School District to be able to offer direct one-to-one -one support with a special education teacher um, K through 12. We just need to um, finish hiring on that remote piece for the elementary school. Um, in addition, in the upper middle, middle high school, in addition to the synchronous learning and the direct one-to-one -one instruction, we also have um, the case managers that will remain case managers, whether the child is remote or in-person. Additionally, we've been able to provide some at-home support for some of our students um, who needed that engagement through what we call a registered behavior technician. So some of our students with more complex needs that have trouble engaging on remote instruction um, that are home right now uh, would get some additional at-home uh, RBT support in order to engage with the instructional activities. Because as you know, sometimes be able to um, engage a student remotely when we, usually it takes a hand over hand um, lead, led lesson, we sometimes need staff right there. So we contract with outside agencies to provide that support. Thanks, Carly. Great. Sounds, sounds really good. Can we get a quick update on how the IB program is doing remotely since the kids were in school two days from Mike, if we could? Sure, Mr. Guinan. Sure, so um, we're able to offer the IB program in full. Um, the classes got started, I think, like with all classes, they're adjusting to synchronous learning, um, but things are going well so far. And we have 21 students in the 11th grade challenging the diploma. Wow, great. Thanks. Great, That's great. thank you. All right, one last chance for any questions from the public or the administrators at this time, or if anyone would like to say anything as a continuation of public input one, just raise your hand. Brian, it looks like two people did um, put questions into the chat. All right, let's take a look. Um, all right, kids have been walking around after school without masks. Can anything be done? Question. So not, not an easy situation to regulate outside of school. So within school, we can certainly um, address situations uh, and control it uh, much more, uh, I guess, succinctly or tightly. But when they're outside of school, I guess the most that we can do is continue to communicate with parents uh, and the community regarding the importance of mask wearing uh, and social distancing. But uh, when, when students are not in school, um, our ability to control their behavior is obviously much more limited. Okay. And question number two, has there been any, any thought to coming up with ways to cut down on screen time? My daughter is in 10 and while the remote is much better than last spring with the bell schedule and then homework, it's around eight to 10 hours of screen time on remote days. Yeah, that's a tough one. Um... I wish I could say that I had uh, a magic solution to that, but the bell schedule in and of itself uh, requires much more screen time than normal. So in a typical school day, roughly six and a half hours um, and students, the majority of that time are in classes. Uh, and then there is of course uh, homework uh, and, and work outside of the school day, um, but I don't, if I were to suggest that I could significantly reduce that time without altering the structure, I'd be misleading. Um, so I think we're sort of, that's the environment we're in for the foreseeable future. Uh, Ms. Carriero or Mr. Malone, if you have any uh, input that suggests otherwise, please share. I, I, I would just echo what Mr. Nichols said. It, it's definitely a challenge. The um, you know, speaking about the, the elementary experience, I know that both the teachers and the parents have this as, um, you know, a, a priority to, um, you know, use the screen productively, use the screen time productively, but do our best to limit it and also provide children with learning opportunities where they can get outside, do things with their hands, um, have those multi-sensory options, but it does remain a challenge and it's something that we're um, continuing to work on. 
Ms. Carrier, do you want to comment? Yeah, so I would echo the sentiments of Mr. Malone and Mr. Nichols that, and especially at the middle high school with going to a synchronous um, remote learning environment, but especially a lot, making sure that we have screen time. But we're also trying to figure out asynchronous ways for our remote learners to maybe take a breath or a breather for independent work during the day. And we're talking in grade teams and departments about that as well, but it is a challenge. and. I think that's why um, we're constantly learning and in the middle school changed our instructional approach halfway through and switched um, to small to a bit larger sections and bigger rooms just to get them off the screen because it was too much screen time. Okay, thanks. Great, thanks. I don't see any other questions. Um, so we will move on to item six, which is the 6.1 principles report. So I think I've probably covered, as is often the case with the COVID updates, a lot of the information, but if uh, Mr. Malone or Ms. Carriero have additional information to add to what we've already discussed, please do so at this time. I'll start with Mr. Malone. No, I, th I think uh, Mr. Nichols, we I believe we gave a, a good overview. It was a su successful opening. We, um, you know, the message at the elementary school is, you know, we did a nice job working together to have a safe and a healthy reopening, but now we have to keep, keep up the good work and keep school open. So we just keep reminding the children every day to do their part, remind the staff members and parents to do the same. And, you know, so far so good, but we, um, we have to keep it up. Great, Ms. Ms. Carriero. And I would say at the middle high school, same sentiments, trying to keep our academic rigor up in this environment of a hybrid model and with our remote learners, as well as keeping everybody safe and our instructional practices to the best we can through a pandemic. Great, thank you. Any board questions uh, at this point? I just wanna say thank you to all of you for, you know, I've just gotten so much positive feedback by from so many parents that are just so thankful to have their kids in school in an environment that they feel that, you know, has been thought through really carefully. And um, I know you all hear a lot of complaints and not always the positive feedback. So just wanted to share that. I also um, just wanted to say that that having the specials in the elementary school, like one per week, is genius and I think it's a really good thing because it not only is limiting the um, the interaction between teachers and classes but it's giving these kids continuity over the course of the week where they can really explore the subject a little bit more so it's it's really cool I just want to add as well like Jordan was saying I think administration's just done a phenomenal job and it's really wonderful to have the kids back in school. You know, obviously it's a tremendous challenge and we will continue to face a lot of them, but I just, I know my kids are so happy just to be back in school. And I see the same thing just with other kids and other parents. And I think everybody's really grateful for, for what you guys are doing. Great. Um, with that, we'll move on to items seven on our agenda. So the consent agenda items, and I would ask for a motion for items 7.1 through 7.10. So moved. Is there a second? Second. We could open up the voting, Victoria. Thank you. Great. And again, thank you, um, Ms. Car. Ooh, sort of back up. Um, thank, thank you, Catherine. Well, I was going to, sort of voting came up again. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Catherine. And thank you, Victoria, two people that have, um, are, leaving, are leaving our school. So we thank you both. Wish you good luck. Yes. Thank you. 
Agreed. Thank you both. Yeah, thank you, Victoria. Much appreciated. Um, with that, we'll move on to items eight on the action items. So item 8.1 is to approve the professional development plan. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, board discussion. Um, I just request that the superintendent explain to the public what that is and what we're approving. Jeff? Sure. So the purpose of the, and I'm going to read straight from the state guidance. So um, I'm very succinct. The purpose of the professional learning plan shall be to improve the quality of teaching and learning by ensuring that when teachers and leaders participate in substantial professional learning, they have opportunities for professional growth, remain current with their profession and meet the learning needs of their students. So basically, um, this plan should provide a roadmap on an annual basis for how the district approaches professional development. Uh, it's approved uh, annually, uh, and there should be two real starting components. One is uh, there should be a committee, and the composition should be the superintendent of schools, school administrators, teachers, parents, um, perhaps uh, representatives from higher education, if possible, uh, and curriculum specialists, uh, often teachers. Uh, and the first step usually uh, in a given year is a needs assessment that typically uh, is done or completed by in or around October 1st. Uh, everything's been adjusted this year a little bit because of the focus on reopening, but our goal in Sag Harbor should be to have that the committee in place uh, and that needs assessment go out, I would say by uh, mid-October um, so that that can guide uh, the path forward for 2021. Thank you. Any other board questions? I'm all for, for professional development. The yeah. More the, better. <laughs> the more the better. Absolutely. Um, okay, with that, having no other questions, can we open up the voting, Victoria? That's unanimous, thank you. Great, thank you. Item 8.2 which is an addendum to the agreement with H2M Architects and Engineers dated May of 2020. Is there a motion? So moved. I'm oh, sorry, so I'll second it. Uh, board discussion. Questions from the board? Jeff, if you want to just give a brief explanation as to what this is. Sure. So H2M was the architectural firm uh, that we utilize for completing the retaining wall uh, at the rear of the Sag Harbor Learning Center. Um, and I believe that they did a very, very good job. We had some needs with regard to tents for outdoor space. And in order to um, procure the necessary uh, permits, to make that happen, we needed to contract with an architectural firm. So we contacted them and the addendum that's before you this evening uh, represents uh, the agreement that we came up with them um, to provide that service. Great. Thank you, just so that everybody is aware of what that service was. Uh, if they hadn't been previously, any other board questions? If not, we'll open it up to a vote. Okay, Victoria. I just want to add, I, I needed to come to the, to the um, Pearson on Friday, and I was very impressed with the tent that was set up in the front and with the thermometer stations. I just thought it was really well thought out and uh, easy to use. So thank you to them and the, and the administration on that. Just waiting for Alex. Thank you, that's unanimous. Thank you. 
Um, no items under nine. Item 10.1, uh, discussion items. Potential changes to the calendar regarding Juneteenth and Columbus Day slash Indigenous Peoples Day. Uh, board discussion. So I can I can start on this one since I had requested um, it go on the agenda. Um, so as we discussed previously, we had a request come in from uh, a teacher, a member of our community that was uh, came from from her as well as a bunch of other community members requesting that we um, consider changing Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day, um, and it it's something that I had been thinking about. Uh, especially once New York State adopted Juneteenth as a holiday. At that point, I thought, I wonder what's going to happen with Columbus Day, especially since um, I think it's at this point 12 states and the District of Columbia have changed the name Columbus Day to either Indigenous Peoples Day or another name. Um, similarly, I think at one point I thought it was 55 cities, but I think it's a lot, long, um, a lot more than that have also changed it, including several towns and cities in New York State. Um, you know, I think Columbus Day is something that everyone has, you know, grown up with and associates with having, you know, a nice fall long weekend and, and, you know, that, that sounds great, but what it really represents is colonialism, um, and part of history that's not so great, um, of American history and, in this district, we go to great lengths to teach um, our students about the history of Sag Harbor. You know, in third grade, they do this big unit on Algonquins and they learn about Wigwaganok. And I think that um, having a holiday to celebrate indigenous peoples um, seems more appropriate in this day and age than Columbus Day, I, I do realize that Columbus Day was originally intended to really be a celebration of Italian heritage at a time when um, Italians were discriminated against. So I understand why um, some people feel strongly in the opposite direction, um, why they, you know, why they would want to keep it. Um, so I just wanted to bring it up for discussion. Maybe we can you know, make the change like so many other states or cities have done, or we could just consider doing something different or just acknowledging it in some way. Um, but I just think it would be a real great way to create a more well-rounded, um, meaningful holiday, you know, that can enrich our children's education when they learn about it. Um, as for Juneteenth, I just think of them side by side in that regard. Um, New York State did adopt that one as a holiday back in June or July of this year. Um, and it's not meant to be a day off. It's supposed to be a day of education and learning. So um, from my perspective, I, I hope that one's not controversial at all. And it would be just something that we would just add to the calendar. Um, this year, it falls on a Saturday. So um, perhaps that day of learning would be on, you know, the Friday or something like that. Um, since right now, you know, we have Black History Month, and that's a great month. Uh, but it's in the winter. And, you know, there's a lot of opportunities to learn about Black history. And I think the, the timing of Juneteenth is great, because it's right before we're supposed to go on summer break. So it's a great opportunity just to remind everyone, you know, hey, here's a great list of books that you might want to consider reading over the summer. Any other board members? I'll go next. I have a, I, a, just a question. Thank you for bringing this up. I think it's a, a good topic to discuss. Um, are you suggesting that we say, uh, change the current year calendar or suggesting that we change the, ca the official school calendar for the next calendar year? I'm open to suggestions. I mean, I had brought it up a month ago when we were amending this calendar year because I felt like it was appropriate to do it now. I also, the reason why I wanted to do it tonight is because Columbus Day is coming up. Um, so I think if there was support behind it, why wait? Um, but again, this is really just meant to be a discussion. And so I'm, I'm open. Thank you. I'd be interested in hearing the superintendent's recommendation. Thank you. Yeah, I think that uh, Jordana summarized a lot of the, the key 
uh, considerations. Um, you know, I think with Juneteenth for me on a personal level, that's a, a fairly straightforward um, issue in that, you know, freedom is a, is a, is like a bedrock principle of our democracy. And I mean, the history with Juneteenth is that the Emancipation Proclamation was basically 1863 and uh, people in Texas were not um, really, they didn't enjoy their freedom until 1865 because of developments and a general that visited that part of the world or that part of the country. So um, with regard to Juneteenth, Juneteenth, I, you know, I, for me, that's a more, um, clear cut um, situation where I would endorse uh, naming that as a holiday, if you will. Um, I think Columbus Day is a little bit more complicated. Um, if you look back in American history, a lot of the people um, that we celebrate, whether it's George Washington or Thomas Jefferson or uh, Benjamin Franklin or whomever have um, histories or, or have uh, parts of their history where they were involved in things um, that we don't look upon uh, in a positive light currently, and we shouldn't. So George Washington and Thomas Jefferson owned slaves. Benjamin Franklin was a, a pretty big proponent of segregation. Um, and Columbus, um, you know, he, he definitely played a pretty big role in uniting the two hemispheres um, in terms of his exploration. But as Jordana said, the history of the holiday is such that it, it was broader than just his accomplishments. It was uh, very much about Italian Americans in naming um, the holiday, having a sense of uh, inclusion in uh, their new country, America. So I think any decision with regard to um, renaming Columbus, should, we should proceed uh, in a very thoughtful and, and prudent, like sort of measured way. Um, and my sense is that with both of these issues, because I don't think it stops with just these two issues, I think that in society, um, rightly so, um, we're starting to, to re-examine a lot of issues, um, part of our history, if you will. I think in both of these instances, we would be smart to make sure that we follow a very measured, um, laid out, thoughtful plan. Um, so from, from a personal perspective, to answer your question, um, I would be in favor of, with, with both of these issues, independent of my personal views, um, forming a committee and having some real um, rich discussions with community members about altering the schedule uh, for 21-22. Um, and again, that's independent of the personal views I just suggested or just reviewed, uh, just because I think that this is just the tip of the iceberg. I don't think that you're going to stop with uh, or that society should stop necessarily with the issue of Columbus Day or Juneteenth, because there are many things in our history um, that are worthy of, of discussion um, as it relates to the message we want to send to our students and to our community moving forward. Thank you, Jeff. I think that makes a lot of sense because it's a very thoughtful, deliberate approach. So I appreciate that. Any board members? I mean, I'll go next, uh, Brian. So, I mean, for Juneteenth, I'm in favor of it. Columbus Day, I find it very controversial right now. New York State is still following the day as Columbus Day, um, unlike, you know, the other um, states. Uh, it's the day that Columbus landed in America. Um, I mean, it's still part of celebration uh, of that day. So um, I understand Jordana's concerns, but right now I think it's like a political decision and I don't, I don't think it's up to us to make that decision. Thank you, Yorgos. Um, 
I'll go next. Um, okay. I like Jeff's idea of getting a committee together. Um, I do feel that, you know, history, history is part of life. You know, it's good and bad in certain holidays. There's pros, there's cons, there's happiness, there's sad. And I feel at this time that, you know, Columbus Day, there's a reason why it's Columbus Day. And I knew, do know that people feel certain ways about certain things, but, um, you know, I don't think this is something that we could jump into lightly. I think that it does need to be talked about. I don't think it's a matter of just changing a calendar day um, to call something that. I think that we should have a committee, but I also think that we need to be open and thinking about how it came about and why history happens and in the naming of the holidays. Um, I'll, I'll go. So, so my thought on this is that it's a great, it, it provides for a good learning experience for both the students and the community. And I think the two things, I think one, it should be taken up at the state level because New York state has not decided to change the name as of yet, which does not preclude the school from doing that in terms of the school calendar. But in my mind, it's the, the student's calendar. So I think as a learning experience that not necessarily maybe a committee, but um, students could work toward either side of the argument um, in terms of learning and make presentations if they were so inclined or interested when we're setting the school calendar in February and or hear from the community with respect to that. So I think it, it's, it's a learning experience and, a, and, a, and an opportunity for all sides that indicating it now that we would be taking it up when we do the 21-22 school calendar to provide for you know, an ample conversation, a learning experience, and to provide for the maximum amount of input from our students uh, and our community as to the setting of that, of that calendar. Um, that, that would be my, my thought of, uh, on it. I think that's a great idea, Brian. Um, I was reading an article, I think I forwarded it to the board about um, students in Potsdam, New York, uh, after having, you know, read about the issues, creating a petition and, and coming to the school board to get to get that. And uh, I completely agree with you. I think if we can get some student participation on this, that would be wonderful. Any, any other members of the board or members of the public that would like to um, weigh in, give us an opinion, um, raise your hand or put a question into the chat room. Brian, while well, we're waiting to see who wants to speak, I just want to say that yes. I agree with everything that is, you know, that has been said here tonight. I do believe it's probably needs to be a state call, especially in the political climate that we're at at the moment. Um, but I just want to give a shout out to um, the several parents that took the time to write the Board of Education, um, because I think it's really important that we acknowledge them reaching out to us. Um, I personally I uh, spent a good 45 minutes today reading uh, from, from one parent who wrote um, in favor of changing the day. And I just want to encourage that to keep happening. Just because it doesn't change tonight doesn't mean that we're not listening to or we're not hearing you. And that we as a Board of Education uh, continue and respect the community's input on both sides of every story. So I just, I just want to add that to the, to the mix. Brian? Yes. Um, we've heard a couple of different suggestions tonight. One was to have um, uh, a committee laid out to make a change for next year. Another was to have students um, come to the board and advocate for it potentially. Perhaps the, the best move forward would be a hybrid of that where there's a committee, but we make sure that there are there's student representation on that committee so their voices can be heard as part of the, the overall dialogue. And I want to echo what, what uh, Sandy said and perhaps some of the parents that emailed the board may want to even serve on that committee as well because they obviously have given it a lot of thought and it's important and important to them and they're already well read on the subject. So perhaps perhaps a committee that incorporates some of those parents and, and uh, students makes the most sense. Um, Brian, the, the timeline, just to give uh, those who are um, watching the meeting tonight, the, the timeline for the calendar is in and around February. Is that correct? That is my understanding as how we've done it previously that the 
you present to us a proposed calendar or and that's when we would discuss it in terms of ho dates, holidays, uh, time off, snow days, that would all take place in February. So, so I give, would. Yeah, so given that it's uh, September, uh, mid to late September now, we could get this committee up and running by October, have a couple of meetings and come with an advisory recommendation to the board uh, in January. Sure. So you could look into that, Jeff, see what administrator or teacher would would head that and we can kind of go bring that back to the board in October for purposes of putting it out to the public for interest. Correct. How does the board feel about that? That's fine as long as as long as the committee is comprised of uh, people with different views and opinions, not just of one, because I think that's important to, uh, you know, put out there. Yeah, I agree with Sandy. That all sounds great to me. I'm in support of it. Okay. You'll report back to us, Jeff? I will. Any comments, last opportunity for the public to weigh in? Any hands up or comments? I don't see any. Okay. Item. 10.2 under items for discussion, Sag Harbor Learning Center signage update. So I'll, I'll start with this. Um, last spring, because of the administrator turnover, I think there was, I don't want to say the ball was dropped because I, I don't really believe it was, but there were uh, possible signage proposals that were forwarded to the, ball, to the Board of Education. And um, I tried to re-forward um, some of those today, and I talked to our director of facilities, uh, Paul Wilkin, and the path forward really is for the board to identify um, the signages or the signage that they would prefer. And then according to Mr. Wilkin, uh, he would like to go out to some other vendors that he believes he could get a cheaper price from. So the, the prices attached to the proposals that were sent to you last spring, uh, he believes that he can do better with uh, vendors that he's dealt with in the past. So again, the, the real step or next step, if you will, is for the board to identify um, the signage that they would prefer. And even if it's two options, uh, he can go from that, he can go out from, uh, he can go out at that point and get some bids um, from people that he thinks will will come in at a price lesser than that was that which was originally presented to the board. So is the board, thank you, Jeff, is the board going to get a presentation that the public can see tonight of what those options are so we can have a public conversation about it? No, he had, I had forwarded you uh, photos of what those options were. If you would if you would like to have that presentation in public so you can discuss it publicly, I can arrange that at the next board meeting. If not, you can just go with uh, the photos that have been presented to you and let us know. Now, what, what we shared today was a subset of everything that was emailed to us in March. Is it the fuller list from March that we are evaluating? Right, so today, you guys, you guys, the Board of Education was forwarded um, that which was presented to you in March there was one additional set of uh, options that came to me later this evening, which I can forward to you tomorrow. But basically I, I need you to review those and select an option that's amenable to you. And if you want it to be two options, that's acceptable, at which point uh, the director of facilities will go out and get bids for those options. If you want that discussion to be public, then we have to put it off uh, which is fine to the next meeting. I, I have a question. Yes. Just why is this a board issue? Like, why can't you just pick the sign? <laughs> um, I'm happy to do that. Whatever you guys want me to do. That That's my vote. Me too. Any other board members want to weigh in on that? I think traditionally the board has been involved yeah. with with decisions around signage on the on the district. So 
And I think it would be helpful for the public to see what that is, but because it because it matters a lot to people. But if the majority of board does not want to have the public as part of that conversation, we don't have to. I got to go with Chris on this one. Um, and I'm just going to say that the email that I received today, I kept saying I didn't get it. Um, all I got was a price cost out. I didn't get to see even what the signs were, except for the ones that Chris had sent me back. So I wouldn't even know what I'm talking about, to be honest with you. Yorgos? I mean, we started this way. I mean, we got involved. So, I mean, I'm, I'm indifferent, but, you know, if the other like members, they want to see the signs, I'm fine with it. Susan? My only concern is that, are we going to have a happy medium here? Or when we have a decision to make, and I do value the public and the community members input, but we got to be aware that no one really, you don't always make every party happy. That's my, that's my um, take on it. So if, um, if the choice is to have the administrators make the decision, I'm okay with that. I would just add that I, I think public input and whether it's a board decision or two issues, you know, if there are people who are laying awake at night about what kind of sign we're going to have on the school that, you know, they can, we can have whatever public input we want and still have it be a, a decision by the administration. So I, I think that's really an appropriate decision for the administration to make. And I think, you know, they've done a great job of getting public input on everything and they can get public input on that and make a decision. So that's my, my view. I think it's good. That's been a tradition. <clears throat> good time to end that tradition. So it sounds like we would like a, a hearings from to get input from the public. And then it's uncertain whether the board will make that determination or the administration. So what I would suggest is we will put that on for our October, the first meeting in October, Jeff. Uh, let the public know um, we're going to weigh in. Uh, or have them weigh in with respect to signs um, for the new learning center. Uh, and also if we could see a presentation uh, as to what the potential signs could look like on that date. Um, since it has been the tradition of the board to opine on signs for the last two buildings, um, I would say, in my opinion, the board should weigh in on the signage for the third and latest building. So, um, that's where my personal opinion would be. So I think we should have that scheduled for the October meeting. Can I, can, can I just add something, Brian? I yes. don't think, I don't think, well, for, for myself, I'm speaking, I'm not saying that the public needs to send out a survey or vote or whatever, um, but just a presentation um, at a educational meeting uh, versus a business meeting of what the signs are going to look like and what the recommendation is from the superintendent is all I'm asking for so that the public is aware of it. Not that it's not that we're asking for them to vote or, or to oh, get agree. That, that's, the way I that's the way I understood. That's the way I understood it. That was just going to be. Like, that's not what, I don't think that's what Chris and I are asking. We just wanted no, to be public just to, of what, what we're going to vote. Correct. Okay. And, I, and I'm in support of that. I, I agree right. with you and Chris on that. All right. Thank you. So could it also then just so that there isn't unnecessary time taken, maybe it's a presentation at the next board meeting where the options that were considered are just shown and the superintendent provides a recommendation as to what he thinks we should go with. And that way it's just- Yes. I agree, that makes yep. sense. We're not gonna micromanage the sign. Let's just talk about it Absolutely and not. move forward. Yep. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, as, as an aside, Brian, I think, I mean, obviously it's been, a, it's, it's the COVID year, so it probably doesn't apply, but traditionally board of eds are required to do a tour of a building, a school building before it opens, you know, when it first opens. Um, is it possible that the board can set up some time for the board to do a tour for whatever board members want to see it? I certainly would request doing it after school hours, obviously to minimize the amount of people in the building at one time. But uh, if we could set that up, that would be super. I'll send an email to Jeff and the board um, to have that arranged. Fantastic. Thank you. Any other questions from the public? Anybody with respect to uh, this, this point? I'm just hearing it looks fabulous inside. Parents who have been there, you know, or had their kids go, 
are just singing the praises. And by the way, the tour that was the video tour that was created and posted was a great idea. It was beautifully done and it's gotten the greater community excited about the project as well. So kudos to the administration on that. Uh, with that, we are moving on to item 13 of tonight's calendar, which is public input number two. So an opportunity for anyone from the public joining us now is the opportunity to speak on any any subject matter. Just raise your hand uh, or put your question into the chat box. Um, I think uh, just in terms of. Um, let's see if there's anybody there. No takers tonight, huh? No. OK. Um, so with that, um, to advise the public, we are there's going to be a motion to go into executive session uh, to discuss the employment of a particular employee, uh, employee contracts and or pending or potential litigation. Uh, that'll be the subject matter of the executive session. After the board comes out of the executive session, no action will be taken by the board, then the meeting will be closed um, for all you people weighing in. Uh, and with that, is there a motion under item 14.1 to convene into executive session? So moved. Second. Two people, who's the second? Okay. Um, did we get an, I didn't see an email before the board yeah, meeting started are. for the exact, we got there one? There is, okay. it came in at 625, Chris. Okay, thanks came from Jordana's email. Fantastic, thank you. Yep. So I have Chris Tice motioned and who seconded? I was second. Yorgos, thank you. All right, good night to the public. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you.